When you look at an ABG strip, the first value that appears is pH. And in order to become proficient at ABG interpretation, you're going to have to understand what pH is and why it's so significant. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So why is pH so important? Well, that has to do with protein function. Now remember, proteins are the body's workhorse molecule that do lots of different things that basically keep you alive. And in order to carry out these functions, proteins have to be folded into specific three-dimensional shapes. Much like a piece of paper has to be properly folded into an airplane in order to fly. Now some proteins are folded into very specialized molecules called enzymes, which help speed up chemical reactions. And in general, enzymes do this by chopping things, changing things, or connecting things together. What's important to know is that all proteins, including enzymes, have to have the right environment to work correctly. And the wrong environment can cause proteins to unfold. And unfolded proteins don't work very well, just like an unfolded paper airplane doesn't fly very well. In the case of enzymes, the wrong environment can cause their activity to slow down or even stop altogether. And if this happens to your patient, they'll get very sick and they may even die. But what constitutes the right environment? Well, multiple things. One of them is temperature, but another is pH. And pH, or the power of hydrogen, is the measurement of the amount of hydrogen ions that are present in a substance. Hydrogen ions come from hydrogen atoms, which, if you remember, is a single positively charged proton being orbited by a single negatively charged electron. If something comes along and rips this electron away, it leaves behind the proton, and we now call this a hydrogen ion. You can also now just refer to this molecule as a proton, and we use the symbol H plus to represent it. So if we take a solution and we add hydrogen ions to it, it's going to start making the solution acidic. And if we add more hydrogen ions to it, it's going to make it more acidic. So now I want to know how acidic is this solution? In other words, how concentrated is it with hydrogen ions? First, we have to count how many ions there are present in the solution. This is counted in units of moles. Don't let this term confuse you too much. You don't have to know how much it is. Just understand it's a fixed quantity, kind of like 12 of something equals a dozen, a certain amount of something equals one mole. For you science nerds out there that have to know, this is based on Avogadro's number. So one Avogadro's number is one mole. So we count the ions, and then we have to know how much solution do we have. And we break this down into units of one liter. So we have moles per liter, and this can be abbreviated as shown. When we have anything measured in moles per liter, that is called molarity. So anytime we say molarity, that means we're dealing with moles per liter. We can abbreviate this with a capital M, and we then use brackets as a symbol of molarity. So anytime you see brackets, it means we're measuring something in moles per liter. If we then take the hydrogen ion symbol and place it in here, what this symbol is telling you is this is a concentration of hydrogen ion measured in molarity, which is moles per liter. So now we can start plotting a scale of proton concentration. And it turns out that neutral solutions like water have a very small amount of moles per liter of protons. And this is a hard number to write. So we write it as an exponent. We move the decimal place over to the right seven places, and it's 10 to the negative seventh power. If we remove as many protons as we can from the solution, we end up with a much, much smaller number. And this is also hard to write, so we use the exponents, and this is 10 to the negative 14th moles per liter concentration. Then if we start looking at adding a lot of protons, as many as we can possibly add, we end up with a quantity that's much, much bigger, which is one mole per liter. And this is expressed as 10 to the zero power, because if you remember, anything raised to the zero power equals one. And so 10 to the zero power equals one. Now, even using scientific notation and using these exponents, it's still kind of confusing quantities to deal with. And so we simplified it even further. We took the exponent itself and used it as the reference number, and we took away the negative sign to try to limit the confusion. And so for a neutral solution, we end up with a concentration of 7. If we do the same thing for a really, really high concentration or a really strong acid, we end up with 0. 
And if we do the same for the solution that has barely any protons in it, then we end up with 14. And now we've constructed what's known as the pH scale. Remember to use a lowercase p because capital P denotes something different on the ABG panel. So the important things to know about this scale is number one, it is an inverse scale, which means the higher the concentration of protons, the lower the number. And so the strongest acids will have the lowest numbers on the scale. The other thing to remember is that it's logarithmic. And that means it's not going up by one point at a time. Every point on the scale is a tenfold difference in the point behind it. And that means from a pH of 7 to 6, we're increasing the concentration of protons by 10 times. If we move from 7 to 5, we're increasing it by 100 times. So it's a tenfold difference for every point. Therefore, from a pH of 14 to a pH of 7 is a 10 million fold increase in protons. And from a pH of 7 to 0, there's also another 10 million fold increase in protons. For you math nerds out there, what we've now shown is that the pH scale equals the negative logarithm to the base 10 of proton concentration. And when we're talking about base 10, we can omit the 10 in the equation. So therefore, pH is equal to negative log of hydrogen ion molarity. And now let's do a concept check. So the pH of human blood runs approximately 7.4. Therefore, what is the concentration in moles per liter of protons in human blood? To get the answer, we take the pH value, put a negative sign in front of it, then we raise 10 to that power to get our molarity. Thanks for watching today. And remember, don't aim to memorize, aim to understand, so that you can then apply what you've learned.